Hey, I'm Chris Zeff from Make Everything, and today we are going to turn this H-frame press into a finger brake so I can bend heavy pieces of plate like this. Check it out. Today we are going to be using the Swag Off-Road Finger Brake Press Brake Kit. Now this is a weld together kit that you can get online. Um, this one is a 30 inch kit and it's pretty self-explanatory. It's a bent up piece of U with some pins and then a top piece that will slide down and basically turn any H-frame press into a press brake. If you're not familiar with what a press brake is, essentially it is a hydraulic or a flywheel driven unit that can bend heavier pieces of plate than like a traditional bending brake. So the way this works is you hammer in these pins and you leave some room at the bottom to plug weld them. And it's a pretty heavy quarter inch piece of plate so there's some room to really penetrate in. And you wanna make sure that these bars are straight or as straight as you can get them before you weld them because they will likely warp. You can correct them a little bit with a hammer. So I do a little trick there where I stack up some one, two, three blocks and use them to space off the table so I can check and make sure that this part is nice and square. Now the top section of the finger brake is this uh, heavy piece with some holes drilled and tapped in it so that you can kind of grab the different fingers and you have to weld the kind of guide bushing on there. Now you want that to be square and also not weld it to the movable part of this. Again, everything has to be square. Otherwise, when this thing closes up, it will rack. Now this is a pretty you know, forgiving fit in the grand scheme of kind of machining. And that's okay, but you wanna make sure everything smooth and you know kind of moves freely, but weld everything in a way that it's gonna be nice and strong because you are gonna be applying, in this case, I'm gonna be putting 40 tons, up to 40 tons of pressure on it. Now, this is a very self-explanatory thing and very easy to do. Essentially, you're just putting together the pieces based on a set of instructions that are provided by Swag Off-Road. And you can see everything's really well machined. And this is actually like a super heavy duty kit. It's even heavy just moving the pieces around. So now once you get that welded in, you can go ahead and put in some of the fingers in order to align the bottom of the actual V, the V plate, uh, which is just a piece of angle for the actual bending procedure using the fingers. Before I do that, I go ahead and weld in these two little backstop screws, which are nice because you can have a backstop on this. And then I actually use the fingers themselves to sort of align that piece of angle to make sure that V is nice and centered and straight. Now this is the part where you really need to kind of watch your heat because we don't want to warp this thing. Now my machine's turned up pretty good because I'm welding quarter to quarter, but I want to make sure I jump around and disperse the heat throughout the part and let it cool. So I'm welding a little bit on one side, a little bit on the other side, moving back and forth between the two sides and spinning the part around a lot just so that I don't add too much heat in one section, which could cause a pretty bad warp. I am sinking a lot of heat into this piece, so it could allow it to cool weird if you don't kind of allow it to be heated up universally and uniformly. This is recommended by Swag Off-Road and really recommended anytime you weld anything heavy like this. So now you can see the fully kind of assembled piece and I go ahead and clean it up with some Scotch-Brite and I can put the springs in, which you can see will just sort of help retract the actual finger brake and I can go to welding on the collar that'll hold on to the actual pin in my H-frame press. Now, the pin from my H-frame press needed a little bit of grinding because it was a little bit oversized, so I brought it over to the belt grinder and then just kind of ground off the sort of mushroomed edge. Now, this is a new tool for me. I got a manly 40-ton H-frame press from my friend Lucas, and it's actually gonna be perfect for this. This is the reason that I got the H-frame press was so that I would be able to have a finger break. Now, right now I have a magnetic bending brake, which is great, but it can only bend up to 16 gauge steel. And with this, I can bend, you know, probably up to three eighths, if not half inch of a small piece, which will really be great to have, especially in conjunction with the plasma table for bending up heavier plates when I need to make specialized brackets. Now, this is really just a locating piece, so I welded it as best I could. And then I went ahead and took some of the fingers off so that I could go ahead and install the backstop, make sure everything works before I bring it over to the actual H-frame press. Now it's a pretty nicely designed little backstop. You just have these wing nuts and you can slide it in and out. And I wanted to make sure it was level with the top. And then I can bring it over to the press. Now, aside from getting the actual finger brake, I got these nice arbor plates from Swag Off-Road. And you can see that crank on the right is a little bit problematic for my setup because it's right in the way of the 
sort of rods for the finger for the finger brake. So I wind up actually screwing down the whole thing and lowering my plate kind of one pin location, which in the end wound up being too low, but for kind of illustrations purposes, you can kind of see where I'm getting at. Now this press in particular has a screw out um, ram. So I can screw it out and get there, but obviously I don't really want all that RAM exposed when I'm using this thing under heavy pressure. That's really more, you know, kind of to use as needed, but you can see I am able to actually get it to actuate and uh, I'm able to test it out. Now the big thing with this, because I'm only pressing it from the center, I have to make sure that the actual piece is centered, but you can see it can easily bend this piece of quarter by two, no problem. It actually even overbends it, which is something that I have to kind of get used to using. And then in the Swag Off-Road book, it tells you that you can actually put a sort of telescoping other angle inside that V-block, which will allow you to get tighter bends if you're trying to get a really, really tight corner. But you can see I can make bends in quarter inch pretty close to one another, which is really great. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab an even wider piece of quarter inch. This is about six inches wide and just do a bend in this piece just to see how it does. Now, normally the only way I could bend a piece like this would be to heat it up with a rosebud and then bang it over in a vise. But being able to precisely bend it cold is gonna be really awesome. There's so much you can do with this, especially because it has fingers and you can make boxes and pans. And I'm really excited to have this in the shop. It's a super simple assembly and it's gonna really expand my capabilities here in the shop, especially when it comes to heavier plate, making custom brackets and stuff like that. All right, that about does it for this video. So this is still a perfectly functional press uh, for pressing bearings and all that stuff. And it's got a way smaller footprint than like a larger hydraulic press brake. Now my friend Matt has like a huge 40 ton press brake, but it takes up, you know, probably take up this whole wall. I don't need to bend huge pieces of material. I do have the magnetic brake in the other room that'll do up to 16 gauge, but this will do, I think three eighths you can do with this, or I think I've even seen videos of guys bending half inch with this. Um, now for this, I only bent some quarter inch, but even just to be able to bend, you know, a six inch piece of quarter inch plate and get a nice accurate 90 degree bend, that's gonna be huge uh, for my shop. I make a lot of brackets and stuff like that and it'll be really helpful to have this. Uh, Swag Off Road hooked me up and sent this over to me. They also sent over their inch and a half thick Arbor Press plates, which uh, if you've ever bought a inexpensive Arbor Press, you know that those cast plates that come with them can be a little bit sketchy and they have a tendency of exploding. So go ahead and get yourself some nice thick solid steel not cast arbor plates if you're going to be pressing bearings. Um, what's great about this is the fact that it has those fingers that can come in and out so you can bend boxes and stuff like that. And uh, I'm really looking forward to getting some use out of this and even making up some custom tooling to bend things in sort of different ways. This press itself is really cool. My friend Lucas picked it up for me from Man Made MA. You can check him out down in the description below. Uh, this is a Manly uh, HP 40. Now, one of the things that's sort of wrong with this press though is that it doesn't retract very well. So I do have to do a rebuild on the piston and uh, kind of fix a couple little bugs with it, but it is a really cool press and it's got a really couple really cool features that I'll show off in another video when I do the rebuild. For now, I think this thing is gonna be awesome to have. And like you saw, super easy to put together. All you need is a MIG welder and you could get something like this put on your H-frame press. This is a 30 inch model. They make it in a couple different widths to accommodate a couple different presses that you can buy from Harbor Freight. And uh, yeah, so go check out Swag Off-Road. Shout out to those guys for sending this over to me. If you've ever watched my tubing roll videos, I always use the Swag Off-Road stuff and, and I've been using their stuff for a long time. So they make a really good product made in Oregon and um, they have great customer service. So check those guys out. If you wanna see more videos using this press break and more videos in the shop making stuff, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Leave a comment down below if you have any tips on how to use a press break like this and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you wanna see what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis, follow me right here at Make Everything Shop. I always post videos of what I'm working on in the shop and there's always something cool going on here. So you definitely check that out. Again, I'm Chris F from Make Everything. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.